Hi, Saints. This is Mina Lee Jones with Faithful Walk Healing Ministries. And today I'm going to present a word to you that was given to me by the Lord in regards to the spirit of Jezebel over America. I'm also going to share with you two visions that was given to me after the word was given and also pertaining to that same spirit. And even though the word that I'm going to tell you is pertaining to America, what the Lord also wants me to emphasize is that this spirit has infiltrated the entire world and it has also infiltrated the church. And in this particular season, it is very important that we are able to recognize the spirit of Jezebel and its infiltration, lest we be deceived. And so I'm going to open up today with that word. I'm going to read it for you verbatim. It was given to me approximately about two weeks ago, and it was during the morning. I was having just a normal routine, not particularly petitioning the Lord regarding anything. However, I was playing worship music and my thoughts were upon him. The spirit of the Lord fell upon me suddenly and very heavily, and it was unexpected. And at that moment, it stopped me in my traction. All I could do really is begin to travail in the spirit as the scriptures talk about. And as I was travailing, the Holy Spirit began to speak the Lord began to speak to me and he told me to write this down verbatim so that I could be able to give it to quote all those who have ears to hear and so I'm going to read it to you and then I'm going to also share with you the two visions that the Lord gave me several days after this word was given so this is what it says it says the spirit of Jezebel over America thus saith the Lord of hosts clean your threshing floors I see the temple prostitutes, they stand in the doorways, they sit in your pews, they preach from your pulpits, they are the seeds of Jezebel. They seek out my true prophets to destroy them. They destroy the sanctity of marriage and they offer my little ones to Molech and to Baal. Therefore, I will judge this nation, fire, wind, water, disease, and war. Daughters, purify yourselves. Sons, purify yourselves. For behold, I come quickly. Separate yourselves. Fast and mourn, for the sins of your land is great. There will be no restoration. America, oh America, you will be destroyed. And the scripture that the Lord gave me after this was Isaiah chapter three. Now he gave me the t this scripture in its entirety, which I will go over parts of it with you today, but I will, I encourage you all to go and look at this scripture and read it with this entirety. And as I say, with all things, take it to prayer for confirmation. Now, some of you who have been following the ministry long enough may remember that back in October of 2016, there was a video that I placed out where the Lord had given me a word and I shared it in that video. And it was pertaining to when he said to me, watch for the rise of the woman. And at the time, I really did not know what that meant. And I actually shared that I was, I didn't know what that meant. However, the Lord did explain this. He said that just as he was preparing his bride for his return because we know that Jesus, his church, his true church is the bride whose garments are without spot or wrinkle that Satan too had a counterfeit and that his counterfeit was the whore and or also the apostate church. And some of you may have remembered that. Now, it was right after that, and it was again, October of 2016, it was an election year, but it was right after that, that interestingly, it was voted in 2017 that it was called the year of the woman. And in some instances, it was specified that it was the year of the black woman. Now you all can go back and you can look that up for yourself and do some research on it. But it was after that, that we came out with a lot, the, the, the feminist movement rose to one of its highest powers known in decades. And we had the Me Too movement. We had the riots, the protests. We had all of these things that were going on. And we saw this major rise in the feminist movement uh, once again. And so prior to that, I didn't know what the Lord was pertaining to specifically when he said that. But as we've seen as the years have gone on, which it has been almost eight years, we see that that word has come to pass. 
Now, what I want to share with you is that shortly after this word was given to me by the Lord, I ended up having two visions, night visions on two separate occasions, but all within the same week. And I'm going to share that with you. And then I'm also going to talk to you about just a little bit of research that I did in regards to these visions. So the two visions that were given to me afterwards was regarding the singer, the famous singer, Beyonce. Now, um, Beyonce is part of my generation. In fact, when she became popular, I was living in Houston, Texas at the time, which is where she is from. Born, I wasn't born or raised there, excuse me, but I moved there in 1995 um, with my parents and ended up finishing school. So she was someone who was very popular uh, during the 12 years that I lived in Houston from 1995 into 2007, after which I came to Charlotte to start Faithful Walk Killing Ministries. And so was never the biggest fan of her music. Nevertheless, I was very well, uh, very well aware of her music, especially when she was at the time with the group called Destiny's Child. Now, never met her, but nevertheless, this is what I want to give out. The vision, the two visions that was given to me, the first vision was this. And it's going to be controversial, but nevertheless, this was the vision I saw. And and I saw her like in this dark room. Um, it was, it could have been a dark office or so. There was, there wasn't much lighting, but interestingly, this room that she was standing in or actually more so kneeling in, she was in there with Obama and he was standing and towering over her. And I don't know all of the context of what had happened, but however, I was able to sense uh, the atmosphere. And I knew in this vision that something had not gone right and it was displeasing to Obama. And she was kneeling before him and she was in kind of a state of despair. But this is what she said to him. She said, I, I will make it right. And she said, just, just give me a chance to clear it up and to make it right. And I will, she said, because I want to take my rightful place as the queen of heaven. And that was the first vision. Then a few days later, I had a second vision also in the night. And it went just like this. I saw her standing and she was holding a baby in her arms. And I couldn't tell if the baby was a boy or a girl. I didn't know. The child was naked and the child was sucking on her breast. Now this child was uh, not necessarily a newborn infant. Um, but it wasn't a toddler either, but she was breastfeeding this baby. And all I could see was the babe, the back of the baby's head that was pressed into her breast. Now, interestingly, she had a tail and it was in the tail at the end of it had a, a metal, um, how do I explain this? Like a metal arrowhead in it. And the, the tail from, from behind her wrapped around to the front and it had pierced the child. And as it pierced the child, there was blood being sucked out of the child. It was the strangest thing. And now when you say sucked out of the child, yes, because it was almost like this tail was like a, a, a hypodermic needle. And so it was sucking out the blood and going through the tail. And so the child, as it was it was sucking the breast of its mother. She was like sucking the blood from the child. And so thus it was this like affinity circle, this never ending cycle between the two of them. And that was it. That was the end of the vision. And so after both of these visions, I, I shared them with my husband. I shared them with a couple of friends in ministry, but I went on about my business. I didn't post it publicly one because it was her, but as I, as I began to pay attention to social media a little bit more, I noticed that more and more people were talking about her concerts. And so I did a little research and found out that she was at the time. And I don't know if she still is on tour. And I didn't know that when I had these visions, by the way. And so I went to go do just a little bit of research and I found out that the, the title of her tour, um, and I don't know if it's just, 
in the United States or if this is an international tour or not, I'm not sure. But the title of her tour is Renaissance. Now, I want you to understand about what the meaning Renaissance is. And I find it to be very significant that she titled this Renaissance because that word means rebirth or to be born again. In addition to that, I had a minister that I'm uh, uh, familiar with to give me a call and they were explaining to me that she was on tour with one of her children, her daughter specifically, and I believe this is her firstborn child. It was a female. And something about there's a routine that is done at the beginning of each uh, opening of each concert. Now, again, I have not gone to go look online uh, to find out what this routine is. One thing about me and everyone is given their measure, okay? So, so hear me out when I say this. But one thing about me is that I tend to try not to expose myself to too much. Um, because one, I'm very hypersensitive in the spirit. Now, I'm not saying that to say that I'm better or more glorious or higher. That's not what I'm saying. I'm, I'm just a hypersensitive person. And so because of that, um, it doesn't take much to infiltrate. And so because of that, I am a person that I'm very careful about what I put in my physical body. Thus, because of that, I don't take medications and, and I'm very, I mean, it's one of the less, last people on the earth to take medicine for something. But in addition to that, I've, as I've gotten older, and when I say that, not just in my physical age, but spiritually, I'm more and more careful about what my eye gates and my ear gates take in as well. And so um, Beyonce, I know for a fact, is a, is a part of the Illuminati. I know that she and her husband worship the devil. Um, I'm not going to make a video in regards to that. I think that most Christians understand that, especially if you have any type of discernment and or if you have specifically asked the Lord in regards to her, hey, I know he has told you who this person represents, who she serves, so on and so forth. But nevertheless, I was told that there is a routine that is done before every concert that her and her daughter uh, does. And the, and the words that are said has something to do with um, her basically in, in directly saying uh, that this child has been given to the enemy or given to Satan. So it made a lot of sense to me uh, when I saw this vision um, afterwards when this was explained to me that the child is probably her oldest daughter who is now on tour with her. And this is who I was seeing because again, the child was sucking from mother's breast. And remember, our breasts are made for nurturing. Um, it's not just n nutrition on the natural sense, but bonding in the spiritual. So breastfeeding is very symbolic. It is of God. Um, in fact, the root word, and not to go into too much, but El Shaddai, the word Shaddai is a derivative Hebrew word from that which means breast and nourisher as well. And so the fact that this child was breastfeeding and from its mother and and then the tail was uh, was had pierced the child and it was sucking the blood out. So again, this kind of vicious, uh, never ending cycle of the child taking from the mother and the mother taking from the child. And this is what was given to me. But the Lord had spoke to me after these two visions. He actually told me, and it was a couple of days after that, that he was telling me that she, being Beyonce, was a gatekeeper to the spirit of Jezebel's, particularly for this country. Um, and it took me back to the first vision where she was kneeling before Obama and she was saying that she wanted to take her place as the queen of heaven. Now, if you don't know and understand what the queen of heaven means, um, you would have to do some research on that. Uh, but the queen of heaven has been given many titles and the Catholic church, under, in, uh, interestingly, uh, it's, it's the title of Mary. But if you understand anything about the roots of Catholicism, it's pagan. And the queen of heaven goes all the way back to even uh, Egyptian worship and even the Tower of Babel uh, with, uh, Nimrod's wife and even, and then forwarded into Isis and Ashtoreth and all of these different, uh, pagan deities, which are all really the same person, um, that was just names were just changed throughout the different cultures and civilizations, 
Um, but nevertheless, that's where the title Queen of Heaven uh, comes from. Again, it's pagan and demonic by all means, okay? So I wanted to share that with you in opening along with this word that the Lord has given me. And um, also too, I'm gonna go over some scriptures or some of the verses I should say in Isaiah chapter three and give you what the Lord has given me regarding this demonic spirit. I want, before we go into Isaiah chapter three, I just want to also quickly uh, reiterate too about this spirit being in the church. If you know about the seven churches that are mentioned in Revelation chapter two and three, then perhaps you are familiar with the church of Thyatira, which is of course not one of the scriptures that the Lord gave me. Nevertheless, one of the, the, the churches, the church of Thyatira specifically, the Lord addresses the fact that they had allowed Jezebel into the church, the spirit of Jezebel. Now there's a lot of debate as to whether the person uh, herself uh, was called Jezebel or if this was emphasis on the spirit that was based off of the actual person who was married to Ahab that we know about in the New Testament in the book of Kings. However, Jesus, when he talks about, when he addresses the Jezebel in the church of Thyatira in Revelation, he specifically talks, he says that she is a false prophetess and that she had caused the people in the church to eat food that had been offered to idols, but also to, she had caused the people to commit sexual immorality. And when we know the history of Jezebel herself, uh, who was the queen over, uh, over Israel at the time when she was married to Ahab or the queen over Judah or Israel at the time, she, um, was, first of all, she was pagan. She was not actually a Jew herself. Um, but I forget actually what tribe she came from, but she married Ahab, who was obviously an Israelite. And, and she caused him and caused the whole land to just be defiled. She brought in the priest of Baal. Of course, that's when the time when we see uh, the, the stories, um, the recounts, I should say, of the prophet Elijah. Um, and then even later on, after Elijah is ascended into heaven, um, we have Elisha. Then we have, of course, Jehu, who was anointed to... Um, to basically put an end to her and her reign and Ahab's reign for that matter. But they brought much defilement into the land and they brought uh, uh, pagan rituals, they brought child sacrifice, but Jezebel was also a seductress and she was not faithful to her husband. And so she was known even then as a person of sexual immorality. So fast forward centuries for that matter, Jesus is addressing the same type of person and spirit in the church of Thyatira in the book of Revelation. And so I'm mentioning that to you all because I like I said earlier in the beginning of this video, the Lord wanted me to, to emphasize that though that word that I read to you in the beginning was specifically regarding the spirit of Jezebel over America and linked to this woman, Beyonce, but that to understand that this spirit has infiltrated the entire world and unfortunately it is also infiltrated the church. And so once again, it is so important that we as the body of Christ, that we are discerning properly this spirit, being able to identify it, even sometimes in ourselves. I remember years ago, and, and I'm gonna try not to make this too long because I could talk forever about the spirit of Jezebel just because God has taught me so much over the years. But I remember years ago when I was first starting in ministry and, and the Lord was doing a lot of training. I was going through a lot of seasons of training. And I remember the Lord telling me, um, this was over 10 years ago. He said to me that any woman that has had to fend for herself deals with some degree of Jezebel. And the reason why is because really and truly God did not create woman to have to fend for herself. We are the weaker vessel, not because of a lack of intelligence 
or lack of willpower or even lack of anything spiritually, but it is just because of our physical makeup because we are emotional creatures and therefore that's what makes us the weaker vessel. But there is a there was a thing that was spoken over Adam and Eve going back to the, the book of Genesis. And when he spoke to the woman, he said to her, this would be her punishment, that her desire would be unto her husband and that he would rule over her. When we look at today's society in the 21st century, especially now in the recent years, we see this just continuous rise of the feminist movement. And the feminist movement, I'm sorry, saints, is literally ruled by the Jezebel spirit. It is ruled by the, the Jezebel spirit, even in a sense, the incubus and succubus spirit. Uh, many of you may not know this, but homosexuality is also ruled by the spirit of Jezebel. Yes, homosexuality and lesbianism is ruled by the spirit of Jezebel. It goes both ways, whether it's male or female. So when we look at all the things that are happening in today's society, it is all, a lot of it is, uh, or the majority of it is rooted in that spirit of Jezebel. The, the spirit of abortion is also linked to Jezebel, not just, you know, Baal or Molek, which we know that's going back centuries. And as Solomon said, basically there's nothing new under the sun. So these are cycles that we go through. Nevertheless, because we are the last generation and the generation that will see the return of the Lord. Jesus told us that it would be just as bad as the days of Lot, which he existed in Sodom and Gomorrah and the days of Noah, which we know there was much, much, much wickedness and interbreeding up on the earth during that time. And the interbreeding we know was between that was extraterrestrial and celestial. And I don't mean ET when I say that you all understand what I'm saying. We're talking about the watchers and the Ben Elohim. They came and mixed their seed with the seed of man through the women. And so, which also there's a point there with the women again. And, and so here we are again in the last days and we're dealing with this same type of thing just on a grander scale because when the flood, before the flood hit, there was not 8 billion people on the planet. So because there's more people on the planet, this means that the this, this sin has abound greatly. Wickedness has abound even more. But praise God, the scripture tells us that where, where sin abounds, grace abounds more. So God has given us the grace to resist the devil that he should flee, saints. That's an important thing here. But again, nevertheless, we need to really monitor this thing and also monitor ourselves, okay, whether you're male or female. One of the things, too, that the Lord wanted me to reiterate, and when I had first posted this word a couple of weeks ago on social media, specifically our Facebook pages, I had put out that the Lord wanted me to emphasize and wanted the men to understand that Jezebel is a, is a unisex spirit, okay? And so even though when we hear the spirit of Jezebel, we typically think of the woman and let me just let me just reiterate that that spirit can be mostly prominent in females it is a very true statement nevertheless like you heard me say that it rules the spirit of homosexuality that it can be both male and female it can interchange between the two just like the spirit of incubus and succubus if you know anything about that they are interchangeable one is supposed to be masculine one's supposed to be feminine but in either way those spirits can be interchangeable interchangeable and they're both linked to perversion and they're also linked to other things as well but jezebel can absolutely be uh infiltrated or take into the take root i should say in the body of a man it can so men can have this spirit as well however in the marriage this is what i want you to know if you're in a marriage then Jezebel cannot rule unless she has an Ahab. So, so that's the thing. And we see that a lot. I've seen it a lot in marriages, unfortunately in the churches, as we've done marriage counseling, where the spirit of Jezebel and Ahab has been prominent in the marriage where the woman basically rules everything. And the man is very passive. Um, the woman is not submissive. And when I say submissive, I mean honorable towards her husband, uh, a quiet spirit or what have you. And when we just look at today in today's society, Oh, the spirit is just everywhere. The spirit is, it's loud, it's promiscuous, it's dominant, it's controlling. Especially when we look at our younger generations, like the Gen Zers and the Gen Xers, we see this spirit and I'm not, excuse me, not Gen Xers, millennials. I skipped one. I'm actually a Gen X. Okay. So now I've just told my age. 
But I am a Gen X. Some people say this was the last great generation, but nevertheless, it is definitely prominent in our, our society or our generation, I should say as well. But even more so uh, with the millennials and the Gen Zers that we've seen the spirit out. And it's eating our children. It's eating our children up. It's defiling our families. We, you know, we're not, I mean, statistically, we have talked about uh, the fact that uh, our birth rate is the lowest it's ever been since before World War I. People are not having children. People don't want to reproduce anymore. We've got abortion. We've got birth control. Uh, people have all these different angles that they're saying that they are, you know, the boys or girls or girls or boys are in between. They're ne neither. Uh, and it's all of this, this, this confusion unfortunately, um, up on the world. And it's literally, it's literally cutting off the human race. If you really think about it. And, and this is the reason why I know for a fact that Jesus is returning because we won't completely destroy ourselves. He won't allow the human race to be destroyed. And so this is the reason why Jesus is absolutely coming back in this season. Okay. And so all of that being said, let me just go into Isaiah chapter three, um, so that you all can have a little bit of better of an understanding. I'm just grabbing my Bible real quick, um, of what the Lord is saying in regards to this spirit and this spirit pertaining to, again, America and the church and, and the world as a whole. All right. So again, I'm going to be skipping around for you and, um, just bear with me again, cause I've got my, my big heavy Bible or what have you that I'm reading out of. And by the way, I'm reading out of the, the new King James version for those of you who would like to follow along. So I'm going to start out by talking. Uh, I'm going to start out in verse one of again, Isaiah chapter three, and it reads for behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts takes away from Jerusalem and Judah the stock and the store, the whole supply of bread, the whole supply of water, the mighty man and the man of war, the judge and the prophet, the, the diviner and the elder, the captain of 50 and the honorable man, the counselor and the skill for artisan, and the expert enchanter. So first of all, the, t the, the, the scripture is titled, <laughs> the judgment upon Judah and Jerusalem. But he says he's taken away. And the reason why I just wanted to start there is because I just want you to understand we're in a crisis as a whole in America. We're in a crisis. If you've gone to the store, like I went through something this week that is just so interesting and it was just so bizarre. So my husband and I, this past weekend, we hadn't been to this one particular restaurant um, in a very long time. And I was just, I told my husband, I said, hey, you know, let's go to such and such restaurant. And he's like, okay. And it's a popular chain or what have you. And um, their menu is just endless with stuff. And so we went there on the weekend and we, there's certain meals that uh, we like to get or what have you. And so when we get there, the, we get to the way or the waitress comes to our table and we begin talking and saying, Hey, can we get this? Can we get that? Oh, and one after another, after another, after another, it was sorry, we don't have that. Sorry, we don't have that. Sorry, we no longer have that. And then she comes back with this entire like list of what is no longer on the menu. And I kid you not, I'm not even exaggerating. It was like 30 things that were missing from this menu. And it really shocked me. And the, and the young lady that was our waitress, she said to me, you know, ma'am, I've worked here for two years and I've never seen it look this bad. So that happened. And then a few days later, which was just, uh, I don't know, a couple of days ago, I was out and running errands and I decided to stop at another restaurant. I was going to go and get a salad or something. And I thought, oh, I'll just pick up my husband something for dinner tonight or what have you. So I called him and I said, hey, babe, what do you want? And so I get to this other restaurant on the opposite side of town, okay? And I get there and I'm like, hey, yes, this is what I'm going to order. And then I'm going to order this for my husband. And it was, sorry, we don't have that. Then I ordered another thing. Sorry, we don't have that. And then it was a third thing. Oh, man, we don't have that anymore. And I'm looking at this, another waitress, and I'm looking at her. And she's like, ma'am, I don't know why. She, and I said, so, so what's happening and she's like, well, they discontinued this. They're not bringing that. They've changed the menu. And so I started going through the menu and I realized that almost half the menu was gone. And I'm not exaggerating, saints. Like, I'm not exaggerating. And I was like, what is going on? Okay, third thing. So I have this cat. And that's more of a personal thing. But I've got this cat that was given to me um, earlier this summer. And um, she's, she's a crazy cat. Like, I don't even know how to explain this cat. This cat is, she's nuts. She's really a dog. 
but and I don't even like dogs but nevertheless <laughs> I've got I've adopted this crazy cat and um, I was looking for cat litter so I'm kind of bougie when it comes to cat litter because I'm bougie about my house and I like my house to be clean and cats can be stinky with their litter boxes so I'm like top-notch anyways nevertheless we had this 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 mega pack or whatever of cat litter in the garage and eventually we ran out of it so I was telling my husband oh we got to go buy, buy this cat litter so we went on this search for cat litter and we went to this one particular store and they didn't have it and we didn't think anything of it and we went to another store and they didn't have it and I just still didn't think about it I said well Lord I'm just saying Lord Lord I'm just gonna go up to this this other store this wholesale store uh, and I told my husband, hey, I'm just going to, you know, next week sometime when I'm out, I'm going to go up to this whole full store and, uh, or wholesale store and I'm going to get the cat litter because that's where I got it from last time anyways. Well, I get to the store and this was just yesterday and I was going through the coupons and I saw some other stuff that I normally get on sale, like some organic tomatoes and blah, blah, blah. And, um, and so I'm going, I'm like, oh, I can pick a few things up. I'm going through the store. I kid you not. I cannot find the cat litter. I cannot find the tomatoes. I can't, I'm, and so I'm now I'm frustrated and I go up to the customer service and I'm like, I've got these coupons in my hand and I'm like, ma'am, why is it that you guys got this stuff on sale and here's the coupons and I don't even see the tags for this. Like, I don't even see this, the space on the shelves for these products. And mind you, I had gotten the cat litter from that particular store and that particular location a month or two ago, okay? So the lady goes into the system and she says, oh ma'am, it's been discontinued. And I'm like, discontinued? Yes, we don't have it anymore. This other one's on back stock. We don't know when it's coming in. And so I called my husband and I said, there's something to this. The Lord wants me to understand something. And, and the point is, saints, and I know it's kind of a long story, but the point is, is that we're in a season of shortage. And and that's for the world. We're in a, and it's only going to continue to get worse. We know that food is inflated. Uh, food, there's inflation, but there is a shortage of supplies. There's a shortage of food. There's a shortage of everything at this point. And then what you do have, you're paying like twice as more for it on top of that so when the scripture opens up talking about god is going through this list of what he's going to take away take away take away even the bread and the water that's what i wanted to reiterate because that is the season we're in not just for america but the world but again this is a scripture he gave me regarding america and because of that it's basically saying part of the judgment will be that the things that we are used to having the things that we're used to having in full supply or endless supply will now be taken from us okay I want to move on real quick. All right, the next, I'm going to skip down uh, to verse 9. And I want to make a, a, a point about that. It says, they look on their countenance. The look on their countenance witnesses against them. And they declare their sin as Sodom. They do not hide it. Woe to their soul, for they have brought evil upon themselves. And so this one's also very important because when we look, we talked about Sodom and Gomorrah, right? And we know what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed in the book of Genesis because of just their horrific, they were horrific people. And even though um, the 66 books or Genesis specifically does not give all the account of what the type of sin that was uh, committed in Sodom and Gomorrah, a lot of us just pertain it to like... Uh, uh, homosexuality but there was way more and when you would have to go into the apocryphas to and the books of like jasher or what have you to really understand the depths of what sodom and gomorrah was doing and i mean it was the the wickedness was very deep it wasn't just like perversion it was murder it was thievery it was just embezzlement it was just not I shouldn't say embezzlement but exploitation it was just so incredibly wicked from how they dealt with foreigners to how they dealt with the homeless and the hungry. Then on top of that, what they were doing sexually to one another. And here's the interesting thing, even what they were doing sexually to the foreigners who were coming into their land. And so again, it's very parallel to what is happening here in the United States. Yes, we have become a type of Sodom and Gomorrah. We've let all kinds of defiled and filthy things come into our land. 
Um, and to, and, and I'm talking about, I'm not talking about people. I'm talking about the ways we've allowed it into our schools. We've allowed it into our homes, into our media. Uh, we are, we're allowing it in, in our books and I mean, on the internet, all of these types of things, it's just full of perversion, full of wickedness, um, full of pride and greed. And it's just like Sodom and Gomorrah. So I wanted to, is I wanted to point that out in reading the scripture because it says they don't even hide it. And, and it's, it's true. We're in a, we're in a time saints where we just don't even hide the sin anymore. It's just in our face. Like not only is it in our face, it is praised. It is worshiped. It is promoted. It is exploited. Okay. And so we have become a modern day Sodom and Gomorrah. Absolutely. In this society. Okay. But I want to go back to, I want to go down to verse 10 and point this out. It says, say to the righteous that it shall be well with them for they shall eat the fruit of their doing. So again, the Lord is saying that in the process of this judgment, he's still going to keep his own. And I know when people say, oh my God, judgment's coming. Oh my God. And we think we, we, you know, we are terrified and you know, there's Christians that are always trying to save a nation or what have you, but we have to remember that we are in the last days. We cannot pray away the end of the age saints. All of these things must come to pass. God will no longer recant or relent, or this is not a story of Jonah and Nineveh. This is a story of the last days, the, the end of the age and the, and the tribulation is coming and the prize is coming and all of these things are right not even coming down they're right at the door and it's what's more frightening is that is so many christians that are blinded uh, spiritually blinded and deafened almost willfully blinded and deafened at this point refusing to believe that we are at the end of the age but what makes it so dangerous is that they're also teaching other people the same thing and people are falling away in droves nevertheless Paul also talked about that. That would also be a sign of the last days. And that is the apostasy or the great falling away. And that's what we're seeing, the falling away from the truth. And remember, he was addressing the church because, of course, if you don't know the truth, you can't fall away from it. So obviously, we're talking about an apostate church. And and that is where we're seeing. So every church out here sings is just not a church of God. It's not a church of Jesus Christ. And, and in fact, unfortunately, and I know some of you feel really like you get annoyed by me saying this, but it's the true statement. The majority of the churches, these church buildings, these places that they assemble together and call church on Sundays or whatever days they come together. Most of those facilities are not the house of God. They are apostate for the most part. And the even more unfortunate, but truth is that the majority of the ones that are well known are even more apostate. And so it's one of those things where <laughs> the the popular is in the popular on earth is not popular in heaven. That's probably the best way I can put that. Okay. All right, moving on. So I don't get lost track. I don't lose track. Um, so I want to go over and talk about, I'm going to move over to verse 12 now. And verse 12 says, as for my people, children are their oppressors and women rule over them. Oh, my people, those who lead you cause you to error and destroy the way of your paths. I think that that's really powerful because it says the children are their oppressors. Okay. So just look now I'm a mom. Okay. Best gift I've ever had on earth is the fact that the Lord blessed me with three beautiful children. But I've said to many that I have had stepchildren. I have raised, I have fostered children. I have had spiritual children. I mean, you name it. I help friends of mine raise their kids. I mean, kids have been attracted to me since I was a kid myself. And that's true. The first job I ever had was babysitting. And the babysitting job was I babysat all the kids in my church. <laughs> and, and I was in charge of all of them when I was growing up as a young girl. And I'm talking like preteens or what have you. And so my heart goes out to, to the babies in that sense. But when we look at the children today and we look at the power that children carry when they shouldn't carry the, some of the power that children carry, they shouldn't have. I mean, it's so bad saints that teachers don't even want to teach anymore. Uh, and we say, well, it's because they're not being paid enough. Yeah, there's no, there's not enough money in the world that can pay me for some of the things that these teachers are going through. If you've seen, I mean, with the viral videos, I mean, the children are beating up the teachers. 
They're t- I, it was a story of a, a young girl who tased her teacher uh, because they he took away her phone because she was cheating on an exam. And he, she tased him. You know, I would just quit my job. That would be the last day of my job ever. Like, I would just change careers after that. Because then you can't do anything to defend yourself because they're minors, right? But look at that. The children will be your oppressors. When we look at the United States of America. Children have become our oppressor. What we deem as children, let me put it that way. Now what the Bible claims as children because the, account, the age of accountability, they're considered adults. But here in America, 18, 21, 26 in some cases, it's a lot of bizarre things going on where how long you can claim kids or what have you. None of my children are at home. I taught all of my kids to be mature, responsible adults, and they are all out of my house and all uh, have their own apartments and living spaces and vehicles, and one is even married. And all three of my children are in their 20s. They're in their young 20s on top of that. But I taught them to be responsible because I had parents who were boomers who taught me to be responsible, and I left my mother's house at 17 and never went back. So... But we have a lot of children today that have oppressed the parents, have oppressed society, have uh, oppressed the school systems. Um, You know, we can we can go into why that is a lack of parenting, lack of discipline. Is it because we've left the, the government to raise our children or infiltrate our children? There's a lot of arguments in regards to that. I'm not going to go into all of that, but the point is, is that this scripture is pertaining to exactly what's going on in today's society. And it says, and the women rule over them. So we, we're in a society today where women rule. Um, they have <laughs> good grief. I mean, the feminist movement is out of this world. I despise the feminist movement. I am anti-feminist and I know I'm a hundred percent woman. Listen, I think women are most powerful creatures on the planet because they are, because they're chosen to carry life. I would never want to not be a woman, to be honest with you. I'm grateful that I am a woman, but nevertheless, um, we, we live in a society where women are ruling and they're coming out of their elements. They're coming out of their rightful place where God has placed them. And some people say, well, you know, well, you're out of your place too, because your ministry, no, this is nothing to do with that because, uh, God, God used women throughout the entire 66 books of the Bible God used women, and more importantly, Jesus had a lot of women that followed him and uh, and ministered on his behalf, in a sense, um, eventually evangelized. But a lot of that was taken away from you all, too, because of the Catholic Church, because they didn't want to put women in power. Another story for another day. But God can use whoever he wants. However, what we need to know and recognize, even if we are, if there are women listening to me today and you, you're in ministry or what have you, you need to still recognize the spirit of Jezebel because it is absolutely infiltrated church. And I'll take it even further. It is infiltrated church in a lot of these feminine or should I say feminine women leaders, so to speak. Okay. And so you really need to have discernment in that because my husband and I, we see this trend like he's. He sees a little bit more social media than I do. And um, he's, we just see this trend of these women in these churches, in these pulpits, and the stuff that is coming out. And here's the other thing. I'll take it even further. I'm probably going to get in trouble for this. But you go and you look into a lot of these churches where the women are in the pulpit and they're ruling it. And you scan and you look at the what's in the church. And I'm going to tell you something. And it's a really sad truth. But the, the church is full of women, first of all. And then the men that are there, they're emasculated and they're effeminate. And let me just use that word, okay? They're effeminate. The church is full of effeminate men in these, a lot of these churches where women are in these pulpits, okay? That's a no-no. And so some of y'all may not agree with that, but that is a no-no. You got and see, we have to look at this. You know, Jesus... Jesus reminded us about the trees that bear fruit, okay? Not the trees that bear gifts. And so we're so caught up in somebody's gifting, their their ability to scream and shout, their ability to prophesy accurately, their ability to lay on hands or cast out a demon or two or whatever. And we just automatically deem that that person is a man or woman of God or what have you. But Jesus didn't say anything about those gifts. He said, you'll tell the tree by its fruit. We're not judging people by their fruits. We're judging them by their gifts and gifts come without repentance for one. And not only that, Jesus pretty much debunked that whole situation in Matthew chapter seven, when he said, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord will enter into my kingdom. And when he goes into that list, he talks about those who what prophesy, those who cast out demons, those who perform signs and wonders or miracles. He said, but I don't know you. 
And so we're not, we're, we're lacking a lot of wisdom in these churches because a lot of these places, again, these assemblies that y'all call churches have been just come places of entertainment. They become a den of iniquities, a den, a den of thieves. Even uh, a lot of people and leadership are, are merely collecting people. They're no longer discipling them. And that's why churches have thousands of people. Churches should not have thousands of people, period. I mean, even, even, uh, Moses's father-in-law had to tell him, you can't rule over all these people. You got to break them up, break them up by tribes and appoint judges over them and so on and so forth. But we got thousands and thousands of people in churches because these pastors are collecting them and not discipling them. Why? Because they want to, they want to line their pockets. They you're supporting their luxurious lifestyle. And so if you leave, if the church becomes a revolving door and you're in and you're raised up and you're sent out, well, then they can't live their luxurious lifestyles. They can't have their eight bedroom man in their in their private planes or what have you so we have we're we're we have to have discernment saints we have to have discernment okay wrapping this up so the other thing i want to point out i'm going to skip down again and i'm going to read uh verse 16 and go from there moreover the lord says because the daughters of zion are halty and walk with their outstri outstretched necks and wanton eyes. Let me just explain to you what wanton eyes means. It means seductive eyes. Okay, so just in case you didn't know that. Walking and mince, min Lord Jesus, forgive me. Mincing as they go, making a jingle with their feet. Therefore, the Lord will strike with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will uncover their secret parts. And in that day, the Lord will make, will take away the finery, the jingling anklets, the scarves and the crescents, the pendants, the bracelets and the veils, the headdresses, the leg ornaments and the headbands, the perfume boxes, the charms and the rings, the nose rings and the festal apparel and the mantles, the outer garments, the purses and the mirrors, the fine linen, the turbans and the robes. So it shall be, instead of a sweet smell, there shall be a stench, instead of a sash, a rope, instead of well-set hair, baldness, instead of a rich robe, a girding of sackcloth, and branding instead of beauty. Your men shall fall away by the sword and your mighty in the war. The gates of hell or the gates shall lament and I said the gates of hell, forgive me. Her gates shall lament and mourn and she being desolate shall sit on the ground. So forgive me for all of those mispronunciations. Okay. I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> I got reading glasses now. I'm getting old y'all. All right, this is the point I need to make. And I want you all to make sure you go over this scripture. So there's a couple of things the Lord wants me to point out. And I know this is going to make a lot of you all mad, but I want you to take it to the Holy Spirit. Take it to prayer. Ask the Lord for confirmation. So he's talking about taking away all these things that make the woman beautiful. And we look at today's society and we see a lot of those things that are making women beautiful. Now, hear me out. I am all for women, you know, you know, you want to dial yourself up. You're going out on night on town with your husband or your fiance, you know, or whatever. Maybe, maybe a girl's trip out or night out. I don't know. I don't do those things, but I know females get together and they like to, you know, go and hang out with each other. I've never been that type of chick because I don't have sisters, but and some of you feel, and I know that there are those who teach, well, if you dial yourself up, then you're a Jezebel. There's some people that are very religiously strict when it comes to that. There's nothing in this scripture that actually indicates that you can't wear jewelry or what have you. In fact, if you go into Ezekiel chapter 16, it tells you just the opposite. I mean, God is actually comparing Israel to a beautiful woman. And he talks about jewels and bangles and earrings and nose rings and all of that kind of stuff in the Old Testament. And and so it's not a, it's not a sin to have those things, but when those things become your vanity and your idol, or you use it to seduce, that's when it becomes a sin. And so when we get fast forward and we talk about Paul, cause everybody loves to quote Paul and Paul was assigned to the Gentile churches and, and Corinthians specifically, he had to really talk to the women about modesty 
about being quiet, about a lot of things. And a lot of people don't understand that scripture. Many people misinterpret that. Those particular letters that were written to Corinth were written to Corinth and Corinth only. And the reason why was because Corinth was a city that was uh, ruled by women. And they're, in fact, they were into goddess worship and temple prostitution. It was a port city um, off the coast of Greece. And it was known for its temple prostitution. It was known for the flamboyant, uh, outspoken women who were known for their bright colors and braided hair and jewelry. And they spoke up and they uh, worshiped uh, Diana um, or Athena as their goddess. Um, and so there were some changes that had to be made. A lot of people don't know that the church of Ephesus was, that, excuse me, not even the church of Ephesus, but the city of Ephesus was founded by women. Go do your history on that. It was also a woman city. So because we have to be set apart as Christians and as believers, and the set apart started in the Old Testament with the Kodesh, and the Kodesh is the Hebrew word for set apart, sanctified, and or holy, we can't look like the world is the point is the point blank. So Paul had to go on and make some major tent changes in Corinth because the women had to not look and sound like the rest of the women that were there. And so there were some extreme things that needed to be done. They, they were necessary. And that's why he wrote, listen, like you can't be known for your braided hair and all your jewelry. And a woman of God should be a woman of modesty. Now, that still applies today in the sense, again, it doesn't mean you can't braid your hair. It doesn't mean you can't have, a, you know, a silk blouse or, or some earrings. But again, if it becomes your vanity, your idolatry, and if it is being used for wickedness, then yeah, you need to get rid of it. And so I actually know people who the Lord, when they called them to himself, required them to cut out a lot of things, including things like makeup and jewelry. Um, I told the story about how the Lord, I used to wear a lot of costume jewelry and I used to have like earrings that in some of my old videos, you can still, see, you can see it where I had like the big, you know, hooped earrings and I actually still have hoop earrings, but they're gold, but you know, like just the different color chandelier earrings. That's what I'm looking for. I was obsessed with chandelier earrings and the different like necklaces and all that stuff. And I was given a, a word, a prophetic word from the Lord, from a prophet. And then the Lord came and was like, you got to get rid of all of that. And it was very hard for me to do. And I was told I can only wear gold. And then I was specified that whatever gold I put on my body that I could not have anything that wasn't pertaining to him. So like I couldn't outside of my wedding ring, I could not have like, I couldn't even have like my kids initials or my initials or stones or, you know, like they have like birthstones or whatever, just different stuff like that. Some people think that's witchcraft or whatever. I couldn't have any of that. So, and I still can't have any of that. So, so the little things that I do have, or, you know, I had to ask the Lord for, and even on my necklace, I just have a menorah and an Yeshua written in Hebrew. And that's it. Like I can't, I can't have anything outside of that. And so, and that was just my measure. That's what God gave me. And everybody's measure is different. I mean, I talked about this, this in the first, the last video or last video, which was the first video I did for this year, how the Lord was going to call us to, to come out of some things. And I even, you know, jokingly, but seriously said, you know, some of you all, I may tell you to give up your wigs and. Interestingly, someone wrote me and told me that that's exactly what God told them to do this, you know, in this season that they couldn't wear wigs anymore. And so we look at this and again, I'm talking to the women more than the men, of course, hopefully the men are not out there wearing wigs, but I mean, I, they are too. They're doing that too. So, whoo, Jesus it's it's changing. Things are changing quickly, but we got to like really look at all of this and, you know, look at the obsession with makeup and the obsession with, uh, revealing clothing and, you know, the, the mermaid hair. And I'm saying that, you know, it's something my mother and I talked about. She's like, you know, they look like mermaids, you know, the Crayola crayon hair and all of this stuff, which make us really look like sirens. And it's like the female is just changing so rapidly. We've just, we've, we've fallen so far away from modesty. I see it on a daily basis. I see it in the airports when I travel, which I do a lot of traveling, especially this year, I've done a lot of traveling. 
And um, I mean, the the attire, the clothing that we're wearing as women is just, it's just atrocious. It is, it's, it's, it leaves nothing to the imagination. Then we're to the point now where we're not wearing proper underwear underneath our clothes. Um, we're leaving the house with no underwear on. And I'm talking about, you know, top underwear and bottom underwear. And it's just ridiculous, saints. And and so that, and, and, and this is all linked to that spirit of Jezebel. Um, another thing I'm going to bring up, and again, this is a very touchy subject, but the Lord was talking to me, wanted me to emphasize the stench of the way the women are carrying themselves and how it's a stench. He said that their sin is like a stench to their nostrils. And, and he was talking about, and then the scripture talks about the baldness that is going to be given. And so we're, we're in a society now where women are shaving their heads and it's more in the ethnic culture than it is in the Caucasian culture, but it is in both or in all, I should say. But I want you to understand, maybe you all would disagree with this, but the scripture actually talks about, see, baldness for a woman, it was a symbol of rebellion, but it was also what prostitutes did. You can do your research for that. And that's why Paul talked about the, the hair being the covering of the woman, the glory of the woman. And um, we're in a society where we're shaving our heads, but also there is baldness is, is becoming very prominent in the ethnic race. And I know y'all going to get mad at me for this, but the Lord spoke to me recently regarding baldness in the ethnic race and how it's, it's rapidly increasing. Okay. Now some people, they deal with that. Some people are born genetically with things like alopecia or what have you. Um, from time to time that does happen, but right now it, there has been such a rapid increase and, and an, an unprecedented amount of baldness. And the Lord told me, he said, it's a curse. It, he said, Mina, it is a curse that is falling on them because of the spirit, the filthy spirit that they are operating in. And there he said, is a sign that they're losing their covering and spiritually. And when we look at that, you know, I mean, and again, I know I'm going to get in trouble for this, but like ethnic women, like we listen, we're the lowest percentage of married women in America where we won't get married, you know, all of, and we just were, and, and we're allowing Jezebel to rule us. Okay. And there's a curse falling on us because of that. And the branding instead of beauty that I just mentioned, and think about branding, branding, think about the tattoos. And all these women that are branding their bodies. There's no beauty anymore. There's no well-dressed hair. There's baldness. They're shaving their head, shaving the sides of their heads, the back of their heads, they're all of their hair, whatever the case may be. Again, not talking about people that are cancer patients. I'm not talking about that. Okay. So please don't, don't start sending me emails and hate mail about it. I'm not talking about if you're sick and you know, you're suffering for some type of genetic or thyroid disorder. That's not what I'm talking about. Okay. This does not apply to you. I'm talking about those who know, they know who I'm talking to. Okay. Let me put it that way. Um, all of this branding on our bodies, this, this tattooing and, and they're like, Oh, you know, well, this is modern. The scripture, the, the Torah clearly states that we are not to mark our bodies. Now, if you've done it in your past, my husband has tattoos. Okay. They were from his past or what have you. Uh, he wants to get them removed or what have you. When you've done something in your past, it's, you know, you repented, that's a different thing. Okay. You got to cover yourself in the blood of Jesus because it's still your temple. And when you mark yourself, you allow yourself to become a continuous target of the enemy. And so, you know, you got to put that under the blood. You got to continuously put your temple under the blood. If you can afford to get them removed, get them removed. Okay. Especially if they have occultic symbols or demonic symbols, what have you. But once you come out of today, I'm talking about these Christians that are continuously getting these tattoos. And then we just look at the world as a whole. The women are just tattooing their entire bodies up. I mean, it's insane how these women are marking up their bodies and it's opening you up to demonic spirits. It's opening you up to demonic strongholds, all of this stuff that's going on, the branding. And, and again, you know, and then the Lord also wanted me to reiterate also to this other thing, the altering of women's bodies. And I know this is going to strike wrong too, because 
that is go getting out of control too. The amount of plastic surgery that women are flocking to now. I mean, now they have payment plans for plastic surgery. That cracked me up when I saw that. I was like, are you kidding me? They got payment plans and this, 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 this all. And, and there's this thing called the BBL. I don't even, honestly, I actually don't know what BBL stands for, but I just know what it looks like. Okay. So some of y'all might know what that means. I actually have never looked it up, but I just know what it looks like where they're getting like their butts done and their stomachs flat. And I think they're getting fat from their belly or whatever transferred to their butts and their hip. And it just makes you look distorted, I guess, to make your butts look bigger. And the butt speed, the whole booty thing, okay, I said booty, sorry, is uh, is associated with the dog spirit. And, and the Bible says that the dogs will be outside the gates of heaven. So we need to look at that as well, saints. Like this, all of this stuff is so demonic. And unfortunately, it has infiltrated the women. And that's what's so incredibly sad that what was considered to be really in a sense the apple of god's eye has now become so defiled and so distorted in today's society and so what we can do as believers those who are truly a part of the body of christ is that we can we need to make sure that we are setting good examples first of all and that we're not allowing these things to infiltrate our homes and our children those who are at home with us and if we got children, daughters, that we're teaching them the right things, if we have sons, we're teaching them, listen, this is not God fearing, this is not God, the way to live a God fearing life. Okay. Don't, don't go after women that look like this. I taught my son, this is not beauty. Okay. That's not what God deems as beauty. And, and, and more importantly, if we're in leadership, if you're in leadership in ministry, it's so important that we are there for the younger generation that we are setting good examples for our young women you know teach them be spiritual mothers spiritual mentors you know help these women to be better wives to be better mothers okay and to be better daughters of god we need to they we need more women to stand up for the women in the sense you know it's anti-feminist but it is proper in the sense like paul talked about the older women teaching the younger women this is where we need to be and even the older men standing up and helping the younger men we have we have an entirely fatherless generation and the men don't know how to be men because they don't have a man in the house they have women raising them and, and here's the thing, I understand, I was a single mom for 10 years, okay? And I have one son, my firstborn is a son. And I just think, I thank God that, you know, he, he and, and listen, let me say this. It doesn't mean that my children have not and did not have their struggles. They did, just like I did. And I grew up in a church, okay? And I was a complete rebel, very unorthodox background myself, you know? But I thank God for the seeds that were planted in my children because they have taken that out into their adult lifestyles. But none to, not to say that they haven't had their struggles like everybody else because they have. But it's so important, saints, because if we're going to make it, and I'll say this in closing, in these last days, we as the body of Christ, we have got to stop being petty. And when I say petty, I mean like fighting and bickering over this and that, that sentence, this, but we've got to learn to come together. Because the apostate church already outnumbers us. And that's the truth. The apostate church outnumbers the true bride of Christ. Okay, the true bride of Christ is just a remnant. But this is a season where the remnant is going to rise. And we've got to be able to come together. And we've got to be able to love one another and be there for one another and encourage one another and, and reprove one another and give to one another. And all of those things that we can be, the again, the true church of Jesus Christ, which he said the gates of hell will not prevail against. So I'll leave you with that, saints. Thank you so much for allowing me into your homes today. Take this video and share it with the body of Christ, with your pastors, your leaders, your prayer groups, your Bible study groups, your home churches, and whoever else, as the Lord said, has ears to hear. Until next time, God bless all of you all. Shalom.